All right, now it's time to, so we didn't need any, any so if, I, if anybody asks any questions about milestones and I see I need to write a code, under the project directory, there will be an overview the first time it happens. An overview directory will appear with the milestone and a sample code that I have written to explain. So lots of people ask questions, it happens. How this thing happens, I write a piece of code to explain, then it's going to appear over there. Not in this case, it didn't appear over here. Um, that's that. Now, any questions about anything, test anything before I start my animal kingdom? If anyone? Yes. Uh huh. Not including six. Yes, not include up to and not including six. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I am leaning towards having two more tests instead of only a final. I am leaning forward because final becomes too intense. I I rather split the thing and have two tests depending on how we improve. If I finish the topics pro quickly and I see we have enough time, then I'll make the final two tests. So I'm going to say week six, seven, and eight, this one, and nine, and ten, and eleven, us, okay? Like that, you're going to have shorter and less stuff to focus on, and we're going to have a more clear understanding on what the, if, but that's not a promise, because that's more work for me. <laughs> so, so we'll see if I can do it, all right? So now... What I'm about to do over here is hmm. let me pause it. Look at what we have done down to this point and Uh, this is where I want to go. No, I want to go here. OP2, uh, I want to go here. So, <clears throat> yes. Only the lab, no DIY. So we're just going to give you lab ones, and I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Okay. So, so, so you don't have it. Your, your essentially your project replaces the DIY part of it. Um, I think we are pretty uh, over everything over here. We have done all these good stuff: uh, uh, classes, resources, input output operators. We went through all these things, uh, and now actually we are uh, we can. So, any questions about the first half of the semester or anything that is unclear before I start the RIVE classes? No? Okay, so <clears throat> not the. No, no, yeah, I know. Because everything, uh, again, that's, that's an addendum, okay? And the addendum that we have over here is not a hundred percent thing. Things change, okay? So, although things appear over there, so it's not exactly, uh, you know what I mean. So, let me open. I'm going to add over here prg.cpp. I don't think I'm going to use it, but I'm just going to do it. By the way, the new version doesn't show that big thing anymore. It's, it's, uh, it's easier now. <laughs> uh, 
uh, he doesn't show all the different things it uses. Kind of it, it tries to find what you have. Anyways, add uh, existing project and two four four Z A A twelve animal. We're going to talk about animals. All right. So let's say I want to create something that encapsulates an animal, OK? Um, and my encapsulation of an animal would be uh, something that has some kind of a name, OK? I create, uh, uh, it doesn't need to have, because this is from last semester, I just copied and pasted the thing, and I'm, and I'm using that the code that I had before. So. Uh, I just wrote over here that the copy constructor and copy assignment, in case you want to test and see what it does, put some message in it and see how it happens. But anyway, so it, uh, we, I have an animal that has a name. An animal can act like an animal, do something that an animal does. An animal can move like an animal. An animal can make a sound. So these are the things that is important for me and encapsulates an animal for me. We talked about extern, right? We talked so. I create an extern Boolean thingy over here in the animal to, so I can activate it and deactivate it so I can turn on messages, turn messages on and off. And the animal of mine, and let me actually set this thing to, as startup project. And the animal of mine is implemented as this. As this. First of all, at the back, back of the class, uh, can you see this, or it's too small? It's OK? It's OK? Kind of small? Better? All right. Thank you. So, so what I'm doing in here, uh, I have uh, at, uh, a function over here that sets the name of the animal, and I have, so I have a a modifier that says the name of an animal, and I have a query that gives the name of the animal out. Obviously, the query is constant, and uh, the modifier is not. Um, so um, when I'm creating an animal, I'm setting the name, and I'm saying I'm creating this animal. Um, obviously, I have some copy constructor stuff created over here to test it and see how it works. My um, query just returns the name of the animal. Um, and um, apparently, utility over here is called ut in this thing. Let me see how the utility works. So wow, these are the stuff from last semester. Uh, all right, so uh, utility, yeah, I extern it to ut. So ut is created for utility. That's the name of my object in this thing, animal thingy. So I don't have to include uh, string copy and stuff like that. Uh, so I, uh, if I. Uh, uh, Get a name. I copy the the animal and uh, I pass it through. Uh, pass the, set the name of the animal. When an animal acts, I'm going to say act like animal, move like animal, and sound like animal. And the destructor shows that I'm removing an animal. Are we okay with this? Very simple object to create. Everybody's okay with this. Are we okay with this? All right. So let's go to main. So this is that, the, the construction and stuff that I wanted to show what happens when you create and return uh, uh, an animal by uh, a value or not. So this is by reference. Remove the reference to see how the copy constructor works. Um, but um, uh, for now, I'm going to comment. Uh, I'm not going to call it. So I'm creating an animal called Buffy. And I'm going to create uh, an animal by default. Uh, therefore, when it's created, the animal works like this. So let's put this one at right and remove this. So when the animal, so I'm setting the debugging to true. So Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. Therefore, the one argument constructor is called, and the name will be set to Buffy. 
Well, before anything happens, we know that step number one is for the uh, member variables to get initialized. So that happens. If the initialization area was set, that would, be, that would have been the next step, but uh, we don't have it. So it sets the name with Buffy. So the name is set We're using a string copy that I have in the utilities. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, and that's it. So it can actually say creating Buffy the animal. And the next one is a default one, which essentially creates the animal uh, with no name in it. So it's going to say creating nameless the animal. OK? And, um, and that's that. And comes out. Then I set A to B. Because the assignment operator is set, it comes over here and sets the animal. It's going to say setting nameless to Buffy and returns. So I have both set or that one then acts like an animal, moves like an animal, and make a sound like an animal. And that's the end, and returns, and uh, both animals are dead, and we are out. Are we OK with this? Questions? Suggestions? One thing I want to show you that I actually taught my IPC students, and now I'm going to tell you, is something that you re we are required to do from now on. OK? So go to Visual Studio. For example, in here I have an SDR copy with a length. When you look at the SDR copy with the length, you see that SDR copy, unlike string copy, this function null terminates. So if you put SDR n copy, normal one, and you put a length, it reaches the length. It's not going to null terminate. You have to do it manually. So I didn't like it. I wrote this. So what do I do? I'll go to my utils, and for this one, <clears throat> just take a look at this. One. Two and three. It brings a comment like this. So I'm going to say uh, copies source to destination and null terminates the destination. OK? What is the first one? Uh, C string to copy to. This one is C string to copy from. This one, maximum number of characters to copy. And it returns <coughs> the address of the destination. OK? I save it. <coughs> now see what happens. When I, come to when I come to this animal.cpp, and this is when SDR copy happens, when I bring it over here, see what happens? It shows in detail exactly what SDR copy does. Copy source of destination and not in the destination. Parameters, des, C string to copy to. Source, C string to copy from. Len, maximum number of characters. Returns the address of the des. OK? So from now on, any function you write, in the prototype, only three slashes. Briefly, don't write story of your life. Yesterday I was shopping and I realized, don't do that, OK? Just write to the point what it does so we can I can actually uh, test it. And you can actually see it, how it works too. Are we OK with this? Yes. Three slashes. No, no, it poof, comes by itself. You don't do it. Just three slashes. Oh, magic, yes, beautiful. <laughs> Yeah so, yeah, so essentially you put three slashes, and then it comes up. I don't know if Xcode does that or not. It should, because this is a standard. OK? Yes. No, any fun? No. What I'm, if the function is an obvious thing, no. But if it's not, just three slashes, very small thing. And I strongly suggest do it when you are doing the implementation. OK? Not, and this is the most dumb thing to do to say, I'm going to complete the whole thing, and then I'm going to comment it. That's the dumbest thing to do. The whole purpose of copying, of doing it, is when you are writing your code, you can refer to what you had to quickly understand what your, how your code works so you can apply it. OK? So even the, if you are using the utils, please do so. Anything that you have. So again, one, two, three, and it brings the summary up. OK?
Okay, so that's that. Now that we know what animal does, and life is beautiful for us with it, the animal thingy, uh, I want to get a cat. Okay? Actually, I have a dog. That was the time that I liked cats. <laughs> now I like dogs. <laughs> so, but anyways. So let's say I want to actually have a dog. I want to create a dog. If I want to create a dog class, what do I do? Do I start from beginning, do everything? No, I want to create a cat. The cat that I want to create is already an animal. And because of that fact, I can reuse everything that has an animal has, and therefore not to do the work again. How do I do that? This is how I do it. So when you look at the animal, animal is there exactly as it was before. Obviously, it doesn't have that copy constructor thingy over there. It's just a simple thing. Because the other one, people asked, and I added to it. But this is just because I'm, I'm teaching inheritance. I don't want to go through details. So it's a very simple animal, as you see. Are we OK with that animal over there? All right. Now, so yeah. So if you want to create a cat, what you do is this. You're going to say cat, public animal, which means cat is an animal that has nine lives. OK? So you add the features that a cat has to an animal. An animal is an animal. A cat is just an animal that has nine lives. OK? Or so in our case, number of lives. How many type, How many lives are left in that thing? OK? And then the constructor that I have obviously receives the name because it needs to set the animal in itself, all right? But it adds another thing, any other thing that it needs to add, okay? Now, an, a, a, a cat can override. This is not, this, well, so this is not overload, overload anymore. This is a new thing that we learn, override. It can override the features of its parent, which means a, a cat can act, which means when you actually tell to the cat to act, it's going to do a, the act of its own. For example, bad example, because well, I'm going to give you an example that is not kind of correct. I'll explain to you why. But my father was actually a teacher. He used to teach mechanics. OK? I am a computer science professor. So the action of teaching of mine is overriding my father. So if you say, Mr. Solimanlu, teach, I'm going to teach computer science. If I did not have that skill, if I did not know how to teach computer science, and I did not have the skill of teaching, and our inheritance was an object-oriented one, if you told me, Mr. Solimanlu, teach, I would have taught mechanics because I inherited that from my father. This is the same thing. So in here, I can have, like my father couldn't dance if his life depended on it, but I know how to dance. So the action of dancing is added to me. My father didn't have it. It's something added. The same thing over here for cat. On purpose, I remove the move, as you see over there. So the cat doesn't know how to move it gets the moving how to move from its parrot, that is the animal, OK? But it overrides the cat, the act. It overrides the sound. And it has a new skill that an animal didn't have, which is play, OK? If you look at the implementation, this is how it is. So the initialization area, remember that? The initialization area? You actually use that area to initialize the parent side of the object you are creating. So the cat is an animal, right? And it needs to set the name of the parent, correct? So all it does in the initialization area after two that columns that we had, let me make it bigger so we 
So we see what are we talking about? So in the initialization area here, it asks the compiler to create the animal side of me as such. Okay? Then it initializes its number of lives, if I want to. So as you see, a derived class, a class that is inherited from another class, sets its parents and its own properties the same way. Because when you think about it, the parent side of the cat is its property. It's just not accessible because it is a private object. Okay? All right. All right. So, at least put some music so we can do something with it. You know what I mean? Anyway, so, 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 the common mistake that people who are new to inheritance do is this. Take a look. They do it like that. And they say, in the constructor of cat, I am setting the animal's name to that. Can anybody tell me what's going to happen now? Yeah, it's just going to create an animal at line 30, name it the same thing that I wanted to, and dies immediately. And it has nothing to do with the cat. Because we learned calling the constructor, attempting to call a constructor, creates a temporary nameless. Therefore, that does nothing. And, that's, and, and I see awful code like this that I do not like. Really? Don't do that, OK? Please, OK? Please don't do that. Just initialize it in the initialization area, and you're done, OK? So as you see now, act is actually saying that act uh, uh, play. So it essentially says act playful, name the cat. So we're going to go through it, and you'll see what's going to overwrite and what's, what's not going to overwrite. And in sound over here, OK, I want the cat still sound like an animal, but I want it to do a meow too. So I can actually tell to in the sound of cat, I can tell, call the animal part of the sound too. So essentially, in cat, I am calling the parent's function. So my cat function, uh, my sound function in cat is improving the animal's sound. Where act of cat is completely overriding it, which means it's not reusing its parents. Take a look. At line 43, I am telling, and as you see, it's not a dot anymore. It actually calls it with a scope resolution, like a namespace. Okay? So when you are actually in a child class, in a derived class, you want to access the parent's actions, you simply put the name of the class of the parent with scope resolution to directly access what the parent used to do. OK? And play is some, something completely new and has nothing to do with, with, with an animal. It's something that only a cat can do and not an animal. So now, if I run the program, the, the main program for this, now in this main, I'm simply creating a cat, and I'm say, saying it, asking it to act, move, play, sounds, yada, yada, yada. Let's walk through it and see how it works. Oh, I, I, I ran the animal again. Sorry, I should have set this one to, to start up the startup to be the cat. So I'm setting the startup project to be the cat, and I'm going to run through it one more time. So as you see now, when, the pro when it's actually getting called, when the, when the constructor of cat is called, the values are passed over here. So name over here. The name over here is Fluffy. Number of lives is five. Died already four times. And I pass that one to the animal side of me. 
and I'm setting the number of lives to five. So when I press F11, you'll see it goes to animal part of the cat. This is not an animal object. It's the animal part of the cat that is getting set. So the name will be set to Fluffy, and it's going to say creating, creating Fluffy the animal, because the animal part is getting created. Then after that's done, it comes out to cat and it says, as a cat with five lives. So now you see the, the, the animal part is completely set like an animal as it was before, but I added the cat features to it. So creating Fluffy the animal as a cat with five lives. And then we're going to go and act. We know an animal can act. We know an animal can act. But when you're actually telling to cat to act, it's going to completely ignore the animal part and just act like a cat. We tell to the cat to move. Cat doesn't have any specific move of its own. Therefore, it's going to use its father's or mother's thing that is uh, move like an animal. Then it's going to make a sound. We decided to improve the sound, still make it to make sound like an animal and say meow. And then after that, playfully, play, play thingy happens, which is a completely different thing for a cat, and we are done. Are we okay? Okay, now let's go through different sides of this thing, which reminds me uh, to ask. One more time, you were saying. calls out with uh, dot, yeah, with the dot function of scope, right? So for a, example, like animal has uh, calling for the function sound, so it's animal dot sound, right? Well, let's, let's put it like this. No, no, anim you never say animal dot. It's impossible. The name of a class never comes with a dot. Let's put it this way, okay? Outsiders use the object with a dot. So I have animal A, a dot something, outsiders. But in the family, if you are using parents, then it's animal scope resolution. So when the name of the class comes, to put it very simple, if you use the name of the class to access something, it's always scope resolution. When you use the name of the object, you always use dot. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. How many objects are created? One. Yes. Okay. Cat is created, but cat has an animal in its belly. Cat object. Yes. Only cat object create, is created. But cat is an animal. So it's kind of a tricky question when it comes to inheritance. If there are no two objects created. There is only one object. But that object is an inherited object, which means it has all the features of an animal too. So when, um, so <coughs> when the structure uh, activated, uh, only can. Um, no, they both die. Because it's like a second story build. You have one, one story and you build the second story building. When you demolish the building, only the second story demolishes or the first one do, does do? Both goes, right? When you have a two story building, the first story building is one. You inherit it and you make it a two-story building now. When you destroy this, they both go. It's the same thing. So that's actually a beautiful question. And soon we're going to see there are some tricky stuff over there. We're going to come to some tricky parts over there. But no, both has to die. Any other question before we go for a break? Huh? No, two. <laughs> Okay, one, okay, I am a human being, and I am a man, and I am a mammal. Am I three things? No, I'm one. I'm far that. And I'm a teacher too. So I'm a teacher, human, male, mammal. It's only one person, but I have four things in me. Okay, 
It's the same thing over here. It's not like the, when I was born, a teacher wasn't born, of course, but a human. <laughs> when I was born, the human, so that the teacher cannot be inheritance when it comes to it. When I was born, a human male mammal was born. All three came through. And when I die, and I will soon, all three will die. Pardon me? We have inherit new class in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you will, will come. You'll see. Like, especially when you're going to do your project, you'll see. You're going to be everywhere. You're going to have inheritances. Um, are, are we okay? Can we go for a break now? No, not yet. You can see it. Walk through it. You tell me. Now, when you say how many constructor, that that doesn't make sense to me. Why you even ask that question? For an object to be. For an object to be. For an object to be, a constructor must be called. Done. Now, if an object is made out of three classes, when you create that object, how many constructors are called? Three. Because it contains three definitions, three designs. All the designs must come to being. Take a look at that. In here, I am, when actually the constructor of cat is called, I am actually, I am actually, where is the cat? I am actually asking for this constructor to be called. And even, pardon me? Yes. I, am, I have a question. When you were born, were a female born or it was only you? Ta-da! Okay? Okay, so that's, that's what it is. So when you bring in an animal, from code's perspective, the constructor of every class that is involved in its inheritance will be called for that thing to come to being. Otherwise, even if I do not call the animal constructor over there, the default constructor of animal will be called. Okay? All right. Can we have a break now? Five minutes? Five minutes? All right. All right. So, so we, have the, we have the animal thingy and we derive the cat out of it. So as you see, uh, cat, uh, animal over here has uh, some... Uh, uh, name that is private, obviously no one can access it, and he has some modifiers and stuff that we modify and query that we had. First of all, our friend over here mentioned something very important, says that act, move, and sound, they are not changing anything. Why they are not constant? It's just because I didn't make it. It should be constant. Yeah, I know, it should be constant. But just, we, we, I just wanted to give you an example, simple example of inheritance and stuff. That's why I didn't do it. Huh? It should be constant. It can be an e. Hmm? Which one? Oh, eat, if there's class, eat? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It cannot be constant. If, so the question was, if there is a class called eat, and that cat is a line and eats that person, it's going to change the value. So it cannot be constant. Yeah. All right. So now, the thing is that you really don't set name of an animal, right? Even if the animal name you put, like you don't, you cannot, can you ask an animal what's your name? No, right? Well, it, it can't do that. So when you, when, when you deal with an animal, you find out what the name is somehow, but you never ask them. So you, should, you cannot query the, the thing. So this should be actually private. So we have to put these things in a private part of the thing. Problem is that if I do that, then my code won't compile anymore. Why it won't compile? Because if I put it in a private part and I, and I try to compile it, it's going to tell me, hey, the cat wants to print the name. It doesn't know what the name is. OK? The cat wants to print the name, and it doesn't know what the name is. So I would say, what can I do, though? So if I make it public, then I'm breaking the business logic. But how can I only give access to the derived classes, to the children of the 
of the animal. No, friends are only for knife in the back, remember? You don't do it for it. OK, what you do, you can set so things that you don't want outsider to have access. It's like a family. I was actually explaining. My father, let's say, didn't never had it. But let's say my father had a Porsche 911. And, <laughs> and, and, and he loved it. He wanted to drive it, right? Let's assume. He never had one. Like, uh, OK, but let's see. And <clears throat> so I would have asked for, for, so he would say, no, that's a private thing. But he had this Ford Festiva that <laughs> was OK for me to, to borrow it. So that car was a family car. Therefore, we could use it. So, but our neighbor wouldn't have, weren't allowed to do it. Only people in family could use that car. Those type of stuff are protected by the family. The family protects them, but all the family can use them. And that's what we do in here. So if you want something to stay within the hierarchy of a class, you can protect them, which means the children can use it. The derived class can use it, but no one else can. OK? And that makes everything perfectly good. OK? And now everything compiles properly. So the catch math thingy, they're all OK and running perfectly. Another thing that was, again, continuing discussions that we have about constructors and other classes that we took, that other things that we've talked about, <clears throat> Remember, with constructors, you have control over which one you want to get called automatically. But you cannot say, I don't want a constructor to be called. Constructors must be called to build something. Therefore, if you don't mention how you want the animal to be built when you're creating a cat, it will be defaulted, which means the default constructor of the animal will be called. As a matter of fact, if the animal, if the animal does not have a default constructor, if the animal does not have a default constructor, and I run it now, it would be OK. It compiles and works perfectly because my cat is requesting the animal to get created by a value. But if I do not mention how I want the animal to get created, now this code won't compile anymore. Because it says, how am I supposed to build the, the animal? You didn't tell me how. An animal doesn't have a default constructor. Therefore, the program has. So, so remember that. With constructors, you can choose which one to be called automatically, but you cannot call them directly. However, in regular methods of a class, you can call them whenever you want and whenever you find them fit to be called, like the sound of the animal. Are we OK with this? All right, so let's, let's put it back to what it was before. No, no, no. You cannot. You cannot set. You can. You, when the cat is born, you can call it. But after that, you cannot change the name. If it's fluffy, it's fluffy. You're you're done with that. You cannot change it. This is how we designed it. Of course, if it was public, then you could. But in this case, we can't. All right. Which is very fine down to this point. <clears throat> now, when I'm actually. That you see, over, and, and, and other, other things that were asked, like, like can, I, can animal have access to the, cla the, the, the functions of a cat? OK? Can animal have access to functions of a cat? <clears throat> That's a wrong question. OK? Could your father hug you when you were not born? No. Yup. <laughs> it's all psychedelic question. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so what I'm saying is that, again, this father-children or mother-child relationship is a worse type of example when you're going to inheritance. Because in real object-oriented world, my father and I are objects of the same type called human male. My mother and I 
are objects of the same type of human. But she is from the female variation and I'm from the male variation. My mother has a method called birth that returned a boy human being that was me. So my mother had a method called birth that returned a human. And that human happened to be a boy. We'll find out later on how we can design those things. So in an object-oriented world, you and your mother, you and your father, they don't have any inheritance relationship. You and mammals, you have relationship. Okay? You and mammals, you're not a cold-blooded creature. You are a mammal. That is inheritance. Okay? But, so, remember, classes inherit from each other not objects. Classes, designs, inherit from each other, not implementation. You cannot, not instantiation, you cannot say, I have a, an animal A, then get the A object animal and try to inherit something from it. That doesn't make sense. Only classes inherit with you, from each other. And that's why I'm saying the example of father and son, mother and daughter, that type of thing with the example for inheritance is very wrong. But we just do it at the beginning because it kind of makes sense. Okay? In our case that I wanted to say why an animal cannot access uh, a, a, a cat's... Uh, 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 what, what should I call an animal? Animal A. Okay, so I have an animal A Coco over there. Can A dot play do anything? No, that's an animal. It doesn't know what a cat is. And that animal can be inherited to a cat, to a bird, to a, to a dog, to a fish. To many different things. It's a, a, a class, a base class, has no idea what the derived class are going to be. Therefore, you cannot access it. Okay? <clears throat> so, having said that, let's actually do some experiment in here. All right? If I have over here a cat, reference R, and I set that one to C, we know exactly what happens. That R thingy that I have over there is C. They are the same. No difference. When I actually run it, this is what happens. <clears throat> right? It's only, there's still a cat and an animal, and that's it, nothing else. Right? We okay with this? All right. That brings me to the next discussion that we have, we're going to have, which is, what happens if I call someone by their last name? So I have an animal. First, let me actually look at the code, see if it's ready for you. I just don't want it to have something that I regret talking about it. No, we're good. So So I have the same animal and the cat, but take a look. See what I'm going to do in my main. <clears throat> you can always, you can always refer to a cat as an animal, can't you? Cat is an animal. You've actually been doing it with IO stream. You are overloading stuff for C in and C out for I stream and O stream, and I use that to print files. Right? So I'm essentially calling a file using its parents thing, right? It's the same thing over here. 
I have a cat, okay? I call that cat Pepper, and I have an animal pointer, and I inherit a new cat in it called Tom. I can do that. There's no problem with that. You can always refer to a child using their family name. Always. Please don't, because it's too long. Bar that is good. But you can, right? So, and I can have an animal reference pointing to a cat. No problem. Are we okay down to this point? So, the only problem that appears over here, when you, ref if in an object-oriented world, if you return, refer to me as Mr. Solimanlu, teach us today, I'm going to teach you mechanics. Because when you refer to me as my father's name, I'll forget who am I, who I am, and I will act like my father. That's in an object-oriented world, which means if I refer to a cat as an animal, it's not going to act like an, a cat anymore. It's not going to say meow. It's going to do exactly what an animal does. So it kind of, the compiler cannot see beyond the animal. So when I run it, obviously, because a cat is getting created, so let's, let's go through it. First of all, how many objects are created in here, people, before I continue? How many objects are created in this code? Two, right? A cat, two cats, actually. But these two cats, well, the, the two cats, one of them is kept in a cat's reference, and the other one is kept in an animal, animal pointer. And I have an animal reference over there that is pointing to a, to a cat, too. So uh, that reference is there. So remember, if you look at a child using the pointer of the parent or the reference of the parent, it forgets what it is. Now, if I, that's, that's why when we run this code, cats get created at nine lives. Because this Tom thingy is getting created now, although it's an animal, but they are both created. So the cat gets created. The cat is there. Tom is there with nine lives. But <clears throat> when the time comes when an animal When a, a cat is called using the animal reference, as you see, Pepper the cat is absolutely an animal. It doesn't do anything a cat does. And if I actually ask the animal pointer to deal with, the, with cat Tom, the exact same thing happens. OK? Do we understand this? Down to this point, we'll say, OK, so I'm not going to use a last name. OK? But there is a problem. Or what if I use a last name? Maybe I just want the, 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 the animal to act like a, the cat to act like an animal. Absolutely no problem. You can do that. Problem is here. Take a look. When we get to the end, now I am deleting the animal pointer, correct? We know that animal pointer is pointing to a cat. We have no doubt. But when it's actually called, only the animal dies. Because compiler has no way of knowing that it's pointing to a cat. That's memory leak. So careful when you are creating an object of child type into an, a parent's pointer. That causes problem. Obviously, the other one has no problem. Because it was a cat and it had a reference of a cat, everything dies as it is. If a, the cat is created in a reference of a cat and you are pointing to it with an animal pointer, no problem. But if you create the cat dynamically in an animal pointer, you are in trouble. This trouble can easily be fixed. Are we okay down to this point? You said 225, right? Okay. <sighs> yes. Mm. 
You can't. One is dynamic. When it's dynamic, it's your responsibility. You delete it. The compiler won't. So there is no both. You cannot do it at the same time. There is no way, there is no way that you can access a child using a parent's pointer unless there is an unless that I'm going to teach in the next one. Not next day, right now. Okay? <clears throat> we have nine minutes. I can teach the world in nine, eight minutes. Okay? So don't worry. I'm just going to start it off so you have time to go study, and we're going to go deeply in it the next day we are coming in. Unless. <clears throat> so. I can tell to compile. Yes, you were saying something? <clears throat> um, that half of the cat part is left. That nine lies is left. The integer is left in the memory. That's literally memory leak. Because <clears throat> what happens is that uh, you are creating, so you ask the compiler to dynamically create a cat for you. So compiler knows what it's creating. It creates a cat with all these parts and grabs the address. Then you get the address, put it in an animal. When it ends, you are telling the compiler, kill the animal. Compiler doesn't remember it was a cat. So it only wipes out the animal part. You can't, because it's an automatic variable. And you don't have access to the cat from the, from the, from the, so you said manually delete it. How? You don't have access to it. Animal doesn't see the cat part. Let's say that nine lies was dynamic. How could you delete it? You don't have access to it. Animal doesn't know a cat exists. You don't have address. You don't have any access to it. All right, but there is a way. There is a way. <clears throat> With respect to inheritance, you can always tell to the compiler, check, see if this thing that you have over here has an update. OK? How do we do that? How can I make this move of mine in the animal always call the latest version, no matter what it's holding. How can I tell to the compiler, hey, when you are running, when you are executing the sound of an animal, check to see if there is a newer version of animal somewhere and call it. How is it possible? Obviously, if you create just an animal, there is no new version of anything, correct? But if you create a cat holding in an address of an animal, then there's a new version. You can always tell the compiler to check that. How? By telling to the compiler, hey, this animal of mine, the sound is not the real one. You can say, animal sound is not the real one. If it's a new one, print that one for me. Do that one for me. Execute that one for me. So now, act and move over there are not upgradable, which means when it runs, you will see. When it actually runs, let me bring it. What the devil? So now, <clears throat> so as you see, the act is still the act of the animal. Move is still move of the animal. But when you go to sound, because animal sound is virtual, it looks. Is there a newer version of sound? Yes, there is. Therefore, that one is called. OK? Because of that, from today, 
until the moment you die. You create a constructor. The constructor must always be virtual. You will never, ever create a const sorry, the destructor. You never create a destructor that is not virtual. Why? Because when, when it's virtual and you just have an animal, it doesn't care. It doesn't make any difference to the compiler. But if this object is inherited to something else and the pointer gets deleted, because the, virtual, the, the destructor is virtual, it looks to see if there is a new version. If that's the case, it calls that one first. Therefore, everything dies. Now, if I actually run it, you will see that the memory leak will be gone. See? Now, when it runs, first of all, the reference and pointer, they both actually work properly. And when I actually delete it, what happens? First, it goes to cats, deletes the cats. Then it goes to uh, the animal and deletes the animal. And there is no memory leak now. So remember, from now on, no matter what type of a class you create, you're obligated to put a virtual in front of the destructor to make sure in case inheritance happens in future, you will not have a memory leak. Yes? No, it completely ignores. The latest version is called. Yeah, because we call the sound ourselves. Let's do it. OK, OK, that was a good point. That was a good point. That was a good point that I actually, it was in my code. That was my code working. Because in my code, I am manually calling the sound. Am I? No, I'm not. What the devil? Give me a second. Sound like, oh, that's animal, Sh cat. So yeah, I am calling the sound. If I make the move virtual, then that doesn't happen. That was a very good point. So I'm going to make move virtual too, but not the at. And you will see that move is just, so, so this is uh, those people who want to go for co-op and want to get a job in C++ thingy and object orientation, this is an interview question. What is a virtual, what is a virtual method? The answer is virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a method is called in the hierarchy of inheritance. You don't need to mention that one. Just say latest method and you got it. Latest version, sorry. So virtuality guarantees that the latest version of the method is called all the time. Yes. It doesn't matter. If I have animal and it has a virtual method, OK? And I have a mammal and a feline and a lion and none of these things implement that virtual. But the last one implements, it's always the latest version. It's a transitive thing. You don't need to make virtual. If you make a method virtual, everything else is virtual, even if they are not. Yes? Yes, 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 yes. It's for outsiders, not for insiders. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't call. You can call the other functions of the destructor. It works. Yeah. You were saying? Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I'm going to go. That calls, that's, <clears throat> what, for some reason, this is a, um, for some reason, and today for some, Unknown reason, I hear lots of background chatters, and it's kind of killing me, and still keeps going, you know? Ah! I'm going to, oh, it's 22 now. OK, I'll, I'll explain that later. But let's put it like this. If I have an animal, 
and I have cat, dog, and a bird. And I have a virtual sound in here. If I create an array of pointers of animals, in one is cat, the other one is a bird, and the other one is a dog, I put it in a loop and I say animal make a sound, it's going to say woof, meow, and tweet. So automatically the proper one is called. Don't tell me which one is called. It's the object that dictates, not the class design. If animal pointer has a bird in it, obviously the latest version is birds, not dogs. Got it? We'll show, I'll show you the explanation later. But, so we start at virtuality. All right? All right. Uh, give me, let me just do so, if you don't mind. Let me just stop this before the next.